as you can see you could <laughs> wow that looked bad I just bought the cheapest battery powered sprayer on the planet. And this thing actually has a few tricks up its sleeve, such as the stainless steel wand, this battery handle, and the ability to customize its nozzle. So kicking things off, the first feature about this unit that sticks out to me is that it has a battery. So I just want to show you guys a little bit about how this sprayer works right here. Since the battery is in the handle, there's an on off switch. If you press it on, the sprayer starts spraying water. Having a battery in your sprayer goes a lot deeper than just simply ease of use, although that is a nice benefit. The biggest benefit to it is it keeps a constant pressure in your spray tank. If you think about it, anytime that we use those manual pump sprayers and we're pumping it with our hand, there's no way to control how much pressure we put into it. Not to mention as you're spraying, it also reduces the amount of PSI that's being output because the pressure is consistently going down. Another cool feature about this battery is that it charges via USB-C. And I gotta admit, it's pretty refreshing to see new cheap tech utilizing the USB-C because there's a whole bunch of tech on the market coming out right now that's still using the dreaded micro USB. And for all you guys out there that have big hands like me, I think you guys are gonna be pleasantly surprised at how this handle fits in the hand. Since the battery of the sprayer is located in the handle, it feels really good in my bigger hand. As a matter of fact, it feels very similar to how the Milwaukee M12 tools feel. A lot of people are divided on whether they like how the m12 tools feel in the hand but me personally i like the girthy handle that they have and i feel like it fits my hand perfectly and by the way if you guys like the milwaukee m12 tools like the ones i have over here i don't know if you heard but milwaukee just released a brand new m12 sprayer and i'm seriously considered testing it out because i'm just such a big fan of their tools so if that's something you guys would like to see on the channel make sure you guys let me know in the comments below all right guys so we're going to test out the sprayer right now over here i got one gallon of water already in it. Since it's the middle of February right now, my grass is not growing whatsoever. It's actually still dormant. The only lawn application we can make today is some humic acid. Normally I'd like to spray some fertilizer, but it's not that time yet. How much do I have to put in here? I'm not even sure. Here, we'll, ju we'll just guess it. Paint it black, right? So another standout feature about this sprayer is that it has a stainless steel wand. Now typically this is only a feature that you'll find on higher end sprayers such as the Flow Zone or the Milwaukee Switch Tank. But aside from it only being stainless steel, it's also telescoping. As you can see, you could... <laughs> wow, that looked bad. So when you make your applications, you could have the wand out farther from you. And even my $220 sprayer that I have right here doesn't have a stainless steel wand. As a matter of fact, the wand on this one is made of brass and it's a lot more brittle and bendable than the stainless steel wand that comes on this cheap sprayer, believe it or not. As a matter of fact, I find myself bending the wand on this sprayer pretty often. Even doing like mundane things such as like attaching it over here to the cap because it uses friction. It just doesn't give me a lot of confidence. And by the way, if you have a sprayer and its performance sucks, I'm gonna clue you guys on on one of the best kept secrets in lawn care. And that's a custom spray wand called the DFW one. It's all over the lawnforum.com. It's respected by a lot of the OGs in the lawn care community as the absolute best spray nozzle to ever exist. So if you guys wanna learn yourself how to build it at home, I'll leave a link to a video down below by John Ware. He details step-by-step step on exactly how to make it. By the way, if that's something you guys might be interested in and seeing on the channel, let me know in the comments below and perhaps we could even build one of those custom wands live here on the channel. You know another thing that I'm really starting to like about this sprayer is its small size. I never realized how cumbersome that four gallon backpack sprayer was until I started using this. Actually, my wife makes fun of me all the time. What do you say I look like bird when I'm spraying with that big spray? Uh, the Michelin man. She thinks I look like the Michelin man. Because that four gallon sprayer is way overkill for my lawn. You can see how big it is. I definitely don't need it. And if any of you guys watching have a smaller lawn, even if you don't get this one, I would definitely recommend getting some kind of smaller sprayer because it's gonna be a lot easier for you to load, mix, and clean the sprayer up. So the next standout feature about this sprayer is that it has the ability to customize its nozzles. Now I'll be honest with you guys, the nozzles that come with this sprayer are pretty trash. <laughs> This is me spraying using a cheap subpar spray tip. If you take a look at the spray pattern, you can exactly see how it's not a consistent fan pattern and that it's more concentrated in certain parts of the fan, which can lead to a highly uneven application. Versus when you use one of these cheap $7 spray tips, you can clearly see how much more even the spray pattern is. Now this may not seem like that big of a deal, but when you're applying highly concentrated herbicides, the last thing you wanna do is have an uneven pattern because it'll lead to over applying in some areas and under applying in the others. Now, 
typically I like to use these 110 degree fan tip T-Jet nozzles on my more expensive sprayers. But since this sprayer has a much lower PSI than all my more expensive sprayers, I started experimenting with different types of T-Jet nozzles that are more optimized for lower PSIs. And I think I found one that suits it very well. So in order to fully optimize our output, we have to go down on the T-Jet totem pole to a nozzle that has a smaller orifice in order to create more pressure in its output. Now what I landed on is this blue 80 degree T-Jet nozzle. So back to the chart, we could see that this blue T-Jet outputs 23 ounces per minute at 15 PSI. So I timed exactly how long it would take to spray one gallon of water using this blue T-Jet nozzle. It ultimately ended up taking six minutes and 15 seconds, which equals out to 20.478 ounces per minute. That would put us just under 15 PSI and more in the 14 PSI range. And I know what you guys are thinking, what does that all even mean? Well, just to put it in the most simple way possible, this sprayer will take about double the amount of time to make any application versus any of the more expensive sprayers. Now, if you have a small lawn like me, this is no big deal. But when we start getting into those bigger lawns that are like 5,000 plus square feet, then we're looking at some pretty extended application time. And some of you guys might be wondering why is the PSI so low on the sprayer? And it's because it works a little bit different than more traditional sprayers that you might be used to. With a traditional sprayer, how it does is it pressurizes the tank and that's what causes the water to come out. But with this sprayer, since the battery is located in the handle, it uses a vacuum mechanism in the handle to pump out the liquid from the sprayer. Now, truth be told, I do much prefer the traditional way that sprayers work compared to this, but there are some surprising benefits to use Using this type of mechanism. The first is you don't have to wait for the sprayer to pressurize in order to start spraying. All you have to do is push the button on and then immediately the water will start coming out. And the next surprising benefit is that you don't ever have to worry about it being pressurized when you take off the cap. I can't tell you guys how many times when I was using my pump sprayer I forgot to depressurize it and then when I opened it up a whole bunch of herbicide just got all over me. But the number one thing that makes this sprayer special is that it's affordable. And in order for us to really appreciate how affordable it is we kind of have to take a look at the current state of sprayers right now. And chances are, if you've done any research on any sprayers lately, you probably noticed that they're all hella expensive. Now, with that being said, there's only a few features that I look for in a sprayer, and that's affordability, a solid wand, the ability to customize the nozzles, and of course, it has to have a battery. And if we take all these things and we mix it together in our spray tank, what we come up with is a near perfect example of this Side King sprayer. Now, is this sprayer perfect? Not by any means, it's definitely a cheaper sprayer. But at the end of the day, if you have a smaller lawn or you're on a budget or maybe you even wanna use a sprayer to do some gardening, I have no issue whatsoever recommending it. And actually, I think it's probably one of the best value sprayers on the market right now. So if you made it to the end of the video, I just wanted to personally thank you for tuning in. And since this is the first video of the season, what better way to kick off the season than to give something away? So this is the exact sprayer that we use today, except this is a brand new one. And we also have a blue T-Jet nozzle. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed to the channel and comment below what your sprayer of choice is or if you even have a sprayer. And if you end up winning, I'll respond back to your comment. I'll send you my email and then we'll go from there. And with that, this is George from Princess Cut.